Five past one then, already, of a Saturday, so I'm Ricky Gervais, that was Placebo, yeah, with special needs, which brings me to my next point, with me Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington, there he Steve is. Steve Merchant. 104.9. That's it. We're back then. Well, for one last time. Well, it's certainly the end of the season, we're away for at least, you know, two months, we're doing the office special, um, and possibly forever, depending on whether Carl decides he wants to carry on with this, it's because, I mean, we do this for fun. We don't need to do this. We don't need to do this for, you know, uh, um, money, obviously not. The kind of money you're earning, Rick, you do not need to do this. I don't need right. to. It's quite honestly beneath me. Yeah. You know? We don't need to do it to further our career because it's embarrassing being Didn't on XFM. Didn't say, do not even bother cashing those XFM checks. It's I'd not worth your while. No, it's not. It's not. It, yeah. yeah, the time it took to sign them. <laughs> exactly. It, it, yeah. wasn't, it wasn't worth it. Um, so we do this basically to ridicule Carl. Uh, on, a, on a large sort of platform, I say large platform. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, XFM. Um, no other, no other radio station I mean, will have us. roughly the same as standing up in McDonald's. I imagine Richard so. Uh, but of uh, yeah. lunchtime though. Yeah, yeah. Um, or so when uh, it's just a cleaning staff mopping <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in the, if Carl doesn't come back, he's breaking up the, uh, three-way partnership He's very forever. much Sting, isn't he? Um, yeah. about, what, 1986, 87? Uh, exactly. You know? He's gonna go off and sort of make some quite poor, sort of jazz-inflected white man's soul, yeah. and leaving us to, you know, go about our business. Play pizza places. Um, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well I'm gonna go into sort of maybe right Say, Dad, place. why can't I be in the CIA? <laughs> yeah. You don't know anything about it, you're a drummer. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, do you think anyone cares? I wouldn't have thought so. Because I think if someone was interested in having some good chat and some great laughs, they'd spend mm. more time with their friends. Yeah. Or listen to another radio or station. Or listen to a decent radio John show. Ross, I think or like that. Yeah. they listen to XFM for some music to have on in the background that's loud enough yeah. so they can hear it while they're hoovering. Yeah. I don't think our fans hoover. Well, true. I think true. you've got to have- Or shoot up, whatever. I think you've got to have a house <laughs> yeah, to, yeah. to hoover. I'll tell you what I do want though, some great music. They do indeed. They'll be saying, since you've been gone. See that? Oh, that's the sort of link I can do if we, if we stay if together. If you could cut out all the other drivel you speak, you'd be great on magic. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Um, you've got a- Come on. You've got a, you, I know, you've got a rainbow something, haven't rainbow. you? Rainbow. You've got a rainbow something. <laughs> oh, it's rainbow. <laughs> well, I mean, for a last show, that song had everything. It's got, <laughs> it's got two guitar solos. Yes. It's got a key change. It's got bad grammar. Since you've been gone by <laughs> yeah. Rainbow, and that's for Camfield, the Prince of Rock. Yeah. He's going to be the king when Vance, you know, just hands over his his crown. Yeah. And you've still got that on XFM, so you know, don't worry about us going. Oh, you weren't. Oh, okay then. <laughs> no one cares. No one. No cares. one cares. This is our last show. Let's make it a good one. Let me give out the email address because I imagine there's going to be a flood of emails it's demanding saying, this Please, day. Carl. Keep the team together. Yes, it's uh, Jono dot Coleman. Dot <laughs> 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 Coleman's not a team. He's just a big lad. Yeah. Right, come on. Um, what do you mean? Come on, I've got nothing. Ricky dot Gervais. Oh, Ricky dot Gervais. Uh, yeah. XFM. Or Carl dot Pilkington, because you can do it throughout the week. You can do it throughout the two months. Mm -hmm. And um, what's the what's the phone number for XFM? O two o seven. Is it seven double six six thousand? And then just ask people through the car and leave a message on his. Voicemail. Yeah. Um, so email him a lot. O two O seven seven double six six thousand, I think, and just ask for Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Little uh, Carla Pilkington, little baldy mank twit. Uh and say, please stay. Yeah. Please stay. Um Carl. Say something then. Oh are you? This is our show. Say hello. What all are right. you what are your feelings, Carl, so far? I mean this, are you tearful? Are you upset? Not at all. No. Can't can't wait for three o'clock. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so it was interesting how Ricky was saying he only does it for the fun. I haven't even got that bit. Yeah. <laughs> I am paid peanuts to work Saturdays, which yeah. wrecks me weekend. <laughs> Pay yeah. peanuts, you get monkeys. I have, <laughs> I have no fun. Yeah. Right? You have a laugh. And what people You love is, this, you love this! You love me coming in and having a little chat beforehand and after. Yeah, but that's the funny thing, isn't it? Listeners just think, why, why does he get so moody about it, having Ricky annoying him yep. just on a Saturday? Yeah. It's not just of a Saturday. Why? It's in the week as well. <laughs> well and how it's do, I annoy, How do I annoy you? How do I annoy you? Daily. How do I annoy you, Carl? See, you can't, if you be specific. Um. See? The first thing that springs to mind, when I'm trying to work with Steve before saying, come on, let's, you know, find some interesting stuff to talk about. I think you're playing the accordion in the air. 
Was it the accordion? I mean, yeah. it doesn't really matter. They get the idea. <laughs> Although it I was... can't play the accordion, so it wasn't very good, was it? Where did you find an accordion? I just, I just was one out there, right? And then Next I saw the drum kit you started playing with. And then, yeah. then I had a loudspeaker, and I put the accordion, put the loudspeaker. Then it loud those loudspeakers. They're yeah, amazing. My question is this, Carl: Do you honestly think that's going to stop just because we're not on air anymore? <laughs> he's not going to see you on a Saturday, so he's just going to come in even more often. Yeah, I can just drop he in. He won't bother me as much now. I think he will. And he'll have his fob taken off him, so he won't. He won't be able to just wander in. Of course, I won't. So what? They they're won't. not. You think they're, they're, they're going? Of course, they're going to let Ricky Gervais walk mm. in anytime they want. Yeah, I might come in. I might do a few trailers. Might hang out. You know. With Andrew going, hey Andrew, how's it going? And he go, yeah, we're having a bit of trouble. What do you think? I say, lose that off the playlist. Put that one on. Sack them. Yeah. yeah, let's have a little bit of feeder. Feeder, forget about tomorrow. At least we're here today, Steve. <laughs> oh, the I three think. of us for a, an hour and a half more. The last time ever, possibly. It's up to little baldy head manky. Well, little Carl Pilking Todd. <laughs> a number of emails, Rick. Yeah. This is from Matthew Davis. I think he very much captures the mood of the email public. Uh, his, his email is just simply titled, GO! IN THE NAME OF GOD, GO! <laughs> it says, why wait till three? Why not leave immediately and stop subjecting us to this abject misery? Well, Carl did once when he had to get a train. Uh, of course. So, uh, that's never happened on radio before. But who knows? I mean, stay tuned. We might shoot off at, uh, at twenty to two. Or we might get better. We might get better. We might get better because we've done a bit of planning because I got Carl round last night. Really? To do some planning of the show, didn't I? And so we've, we've yeah, got- Yeah, I thought you were gonna be there, Steve. No, I wasn't talking about it. Yeah, well, I, I called him up and said, why, what are we doing? He said, well, you can come round and, you know, have a chat, maybe yeah. get some ideas and that for yeah. tomorrow. So I said, is Steve there? Yeah, Steve, Steve will be coming, <coughs> yeah. <coughs> so, uh, go round. It's close- next, next to his flat. It couldn't- the pub couldn't be closer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, unless there was sort of spirits and that in the lift, they couldn't have got closer. <laughs> yeah. All right. They turn up. You're not there. No. Yeah. He's lied. Yeah. Yeah. Right, well, so I knew you wouldn't come out if it was just like you thought I was going to muck around. I had to pretend it was work All to right. get you out. So you yeah. weren't there, Steve. No. Anyway, so he says, "Oh, come in the flat. You know, um, got got an interesting book that that you'll like." Okay. So I think, well, that's kind of work. You sure. know, he's trying and that. Yeah. yeah. So I go in thinking we're going to get some some good ideas and that from this book. Couldn't find the book. He looked for about forty seconds. Said, "Oh, I don't know where it is." I don't know. <laughs> come on, let's come in here. Let's have a wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sat in the lounge. Right? Yeah. Sat there just chatting to his, his girlfriend and that. Just chatting. He comes wandering out in his underpants. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was comfortable. Yeah. I don't know if you were comfortable because we were sort of pulled up. <laughs> But yeah. Right between the crack. Right. <laughs> Look like, uh, okay, probably like a gay sumo wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah! <laughs> and I did a little dance for you, didn't I? Because there was MTV on and I was doing a little dance. Dancing to Elton John's new one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! And what did you say? What did you say when I was doing a little dance for you and my pants pulled up? Like, right? Do you remember what you said? No. You went, I would poured him a drink, he was in my home, I'm entertaining him, he goes, are you sure you're not a bender? <laughs> <laughs> Is that any way to treat a host? I think it was the right time to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but we did do some work, didn't we, because you then, you got confused and you said, he said he's, you know, oh god, it's like a child or a cat when it's confused. He went, Steve reckons, in ancient Greece, right, it was better to shag a bloke than a woman. And I went, well, yeah, I mean, that's th about the, the male being, uh, um, sort of a, a, a first class citizen, yeah. much better, wasn't it, an aspiration yeah, the, the to sleep with a beautiful man than a beautiful woman. Women were lower class citizens, yeah. so therefore men were seen as, a uh, as higher class. So to have sexual relations with a man was, there was no shame in that. No. In fact, it was looked upon And as I a said, well, it's, you know, ancient Rome, I said, um, even, uh, Nero, he used to, he'd sit in his big jacuzzi <laughs> and he used to get, you know, pretty boy men, to just go into the water and just nibble at his testicles while he, he was having a watch. He didn't do that. He, he did! He nah. Yeah. And he's not a gay fella. No, well no, I mean, you know, I don't know about Nero, but I mean it wasn't, it wasn't a case of a big delineation between what was heterosexual and what was gay. It was just, you know, whatever you- So what, what did this fella do then? This one who's having his- Well he was, he testicles. was pretty much top, top boy, Nero, for yeah. a while. He was in charge. And uh, you know, and they, you did what you did what you're told. If uh, Caesar or, but why know. were people going round there? Why didn't they go? Oh. No, they weren't dropping in. <laughs> <laughs> they, it wasn't like the doors open. I was going to see what Nero's doing. 
It's not like when I pop in here to no, see you. No, yeah, normally what would happen is you'd say, come back to my place, I got a book for you. <laughs> yeah! You'd pop in. <laughs> but you'd he'd come out it. in his pants. You'd, you'd Elton probably, John would be on. You'd have probably been like a delivery boy or a stable boy or something, you know. And you'd have popped round there and you'd have gone, there right, Nero, as uh, as the tablets of stone you wanted. And you'd go, Pilkington, why are you out here? Pop on, I don't know why he's French. <laughs> what, what is that? I don't know why he's French. Just pop under the water and nibble at my testicles and you'd have done it. Because he was Nero. I wouldn't. He would have. Well, there's no, no way I would have done. Yeah, well, you would have. What if I had done? I've dropped a pizza off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you put around there? Nero's face for pizza. I've dropped right. a pizza Right, <laughs> I'd, I'd say, I've done my job. Right? Yeah. That's not the sort of tip I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, he'd have said, get the little baldy chap to nibble on my testicles and you'd have run the wall. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't done it. No, well, you wouldn't have me done the wall here. Right. I wouldn't have done well, it, so. uh, 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 Can I just say this, Steve? Not only would you be nibbling his testicles, you'd have been going mad. You'd have been noshing him just for extra. You'd have had a- you'd have been doing everything he wanted. You'd have been going- he'd have gone, I didn't ask you to do that. You'd have been going mm. mental. You'd, they'd have been chewing, slurping, right. smacking, poking. He'd have chopped- you'd have- you'd have gnawed his right. packet <laughs> off. You'd think you're <laughs> eating Walker's <laughs> crisps. <laughs> there'd be bubbles, there'd be blood. Oh, it'd be <laughs> horrible. <laughs> <laughs> the Beatles from the soundtrack to the Yellow Submarine, actually, and that's Hey Bulldog. On XFM 104.9, our last show, maybe. Me, Ricky, Steve, and little Carl. All right, Carl? But, um, that, that book, that, that wasn't a fake. Uh, it wasn't, like, just a ruse to get you back to show you me and dancing in my pants to Elton John. It, it's that, uh, What was your girlfriend doing during that, instantly? I think she was just getting on with sort of like packing up sort of boxes because yeah, we were moving. She was moving so sure. I, I, I don't think- Well, she's seen it all before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and the book was, uh, do you remember that book that I showed you? That, um, it was, um, a Man's Body, an Owner's Manual. And it's just yes. like loads of stats. And there's one in there- Yeah, it's kind of like a Guinness Book of Records of- Of men, of, yeah, yeah, there's of, one section there. There was, uh- Sorry, hang on, this, it's not a Guinness Book of Records of men. <laughs> that just <laughs> sounds a little bit like you and I were sat around your house <laughs> looking at a big book. Picture of men. The big it. man book. <laughs> the big man book. He is yeah. a big man, isn't he? Yeah. He should be on the front cover. Yeah, it was a book more about the kind of physical body and Exactly, about yeah. Biology and, and social and, you know, sex and all that sort yeah. of stuff. And that was the sex. Which sex is where was, uh, uh, we got the uh, knob news for today from. Right? This is, this is true, right? Um, I read that the. Oh! You have someone's eye out! Knob news. <laughs> Nearly forgot the jingle. Yeah. Um, I read that the smallest ever. Functioning penis, right, was under three quarters of an inch when erect. Extraordinary. That is bad luck, isn't it? Yeah. And it's a micro penis, so it's perfectly, perfectly scaled down. Just a little, just a little look at Carl's face. Well, come the fella have said, look, right, I'm not happy about it, <laughs> so I don't, don't print it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the sort of press people want, is it? <laughs> there wasn't a picture of him. It was anonymous. They didn't read the book and, uh, at, at work the next day and go, look at this, Frank. What? Smallest ever penis, uh, half an inch. He didn't go, it's me! <laughs> he just went, yeah, loser. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's have a shower. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm all right. He must have had to have a little jod with a pair of tweezers. Yeah, presumably. Because you couldn't even get a fist, I mean. No. That is bad luck, isn't it? Was he a good looking fella? What or? would you do, right, if, um, uh, he invited you around and said, right, and he was like the king, right, and he went, oh, Carl, can you just go in there and just nibble at it? And you'd gone under the water and you're just about to nibble at it and you go, you come up and you go, that's tiny. Would you be disappointed or relieved? Right, well, that wouldn't happen. No! Carl, I'm saying if it did, would you be, would you be disappointed? Would you go, oh, that, I can't even get, I don't know where to start with that? Or would you go, oh, thank God it's not a big one? You've got to remember that he's the emperor. So you've got to do what he says or he'll have you killed. What would you do? Would you would you go? Oh, I love lovely set a tackle, or oh, it's not as big as I wanted, or would you th yes. secretly think I'm glad it's not oh, big because I didn't want to because I'm not that guy. I'm not. I'm not even gonna think about it because I wouldn't do it. I know I wouldn't do it even back then. <laughs> even back then? What do you mean? When was Nero at, at it? What? what? <laughs> well, the Roman Empire was sort of like two thousand. Well, it stretched up for to you, about yeah, you, yeah. yeah. So, uh, it's a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. You'd have to. You'd have to. I always remember. Um, we're still doing knob news. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Just a uh, knob news, news extra. extra. Knob news extra. Excellent. Well, in um, you know, I didn't do that well at school and that, right? But we had biology, mm -hmm. 
And I didn't take, uh, didn't take much of it in, but there was one day when, when it was about, you know, knob news and stuff. <laughs> it was. Um, and it was all about how, uh, blood, you know, is what makes... Engorges. Yeah. The erectile tissue. Sure. Yeah, it was all about that. And, uh, there's this girl in our class called Paula, right? We sat there watching it, and she fainted. You just heard her go, oh! <laughs> and she hit the floor, right, because we were all yeah. sat on top of the desk watching this. But I yeah. wasn't really, wa I wasn't that interested in that. No. Uh, I wasn't looking at it and that. But, uh, <laughs> but Paula, right, she, she <laughs> fell over. <laughs> and the funny thing was, right... What was it, a video? Yeah, a video of, like, this, this <laughs> blood... Yeah. ...doing, doing the business to yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this fella's member, sure. right? <laughs> and, uh, she fell over, like, <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, what's up with her? And the teacher was trying to, like, wake her up and give her water and that. And it was really weird, because then the nurse came in, and yet this video was still playing. <laughs> and the nurse came in, what happened? Well, have you seen this? Yeah. And you could hear, like, you know, th 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 then it was going on to, like, sex education on the video. It was all done from start to finish. What yeah. happens? Da -da -da -da. And by the end, and she was still out cold by the time it got to, like, and then they had a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> And that just, that just reminds so me of it. So it then. seems to me that that but, was a sex education class. She fainted when the penis got erect, and when she woke up, a baby was born. That's yeah. probably what she thinks happens. She's yeah. wandering around now. And she the, 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 the whole class just missed out a bit because they yeah, saw so someone. She's ever with a bloke, and he gets an erection. She just goes, "Oh no!" Well, that's it. She was a bit of a class tart, really. That's yeah. why. Oh, like, Carl, 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 she, well, she Carl, 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 Carl. No, she, but she was. <laughs> that's that. Everyone was like, "What's up with her?" Now she's not seen it before, but. Just reminded me then. <laughs> Weird. But anyway, yeah, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't was, be doing... be Anyway, yeah, be well, let's there. leave Nero aside. Please. Yeah. The other thing in this, should we play a record and come back? Yeah. There's another yeah. interesting fact. There is some extraordinary facts in there. Yeah, well, there's more we're facts. We're running over. It's, but it won't be knob news, it won't be knob news, there'll be all different types of news. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Libertines. Don't look back into the sun. On XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington for possibly the last time mm. ever. I was coming in today, Steve, and I was walking just past, um, uh, Shaftesbury Avenue, at the beginning of Shaftesbury Avenue, and, uh, it's sort of a little, little bit of a tramps corner going on there. Mm -hmm. And there was a couple of tramps, proper, proper tramps, already had a few, and, uh, about sort of like 40 maybe, right, all that. Uh, they could be 30, they could have a hard life, they probably have. But he was going, yeah, and for, and, uh, he's a f and, uh, John is coming down, but, uh, Les isn't gonna make it. And I think they're just planning their social, yeah. a meeting there. I just think that they, that's nice, that they've got, you know, they have a, they don't just drink by themselves. Yeah. They have a, they go, what are we doing tonight? I thought we'd get drunk and sleep in the zoo, we? <laughs> we did that last night. But I just like the idea that yeah. they're, they're planning it. And yeah. they've got mates and they do stuff and they go, all oh, right, how's it going? Well, you know how it's going. Yeah. I'm sitting next to you in a pile of piss. <laughs> you know <laughs> how it's doing. Do you think, I, I was also thinking, do you think they ever wake up, like, before they've had anything, at like nine o'clock and go, oh, oh, I was pissed last night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. But you were talking absolute rubbish. What was I doing? You were just going, hey, if, uh, You were just uh, shouting uh, at cars uh, walking uh, in the street. You were joking. Was I, was it, was I really embarrassing? Yeah. Well, you were pretty drunk. I'll tell you this, yeah, I am never gonna do that again. Oh, but at least I didn't make a pass at Dirty Agnes. <laughs> oh, God, what did I do? You were just going, yeah, please, yeah. <laughs> just love the idea they have no little, yeah. little conversations and that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I imagine one of them going, oh, I'm not coming out tonight, I've got no money. <laughs> Nor have we yet. Yeah. I'm just gonna go and dance. Just go and dance outside of McDonald's. Seriously, I, I only made 18p today. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, you know what, like, cause I always, you know, I've always had a, a soft spot for the homeless, but do you remember that time I was walking over to yours once and, um, see there's the homeless people, there's those ones that, <laughs> they try to retain a certain dignity. Um, by, they won't just come up and ask you for money, They'll come up and maybe try and start a conversation oh. before introducing the fact. <laughs> the fact that what what you despise and annoys you is the try that the thing they're trying to hold on to is a little bit of pride. <laughs> I know. And you, what, what do you want them to do? Well, just, be, like, just be crushed in a skip, going, "I'm just give me some money. No, look I at me." I just think, come out and say it. You know, come out and say it. But don't try and fool me because sometimes I feel like I've been tricked. I get annoyed because I feel like I I didn't see you coming. 
You came out of left field, you know, Sorry, I didn't know you were a tramp. I imagine the fact that they're bare chested, apart from a blanket with their hand out, covered in sores, and no teeth is a clue that not they're probably- one, really. Not really. This was one of those ones, you sometimes see them, the ones they're slightly older and they've got a full suit on. They wear a complete suit, like a pinstripe suit or something, with maybe trainers, <laughs> admittedly. <laughs> yeah. And I sometimes think to myself, you know, at what point in that moment before they finally left the house for the last time, did they think, well, what, well I'm gonna be homeless. I want to look good if I'm going to be. But it happens, I'm sleeping rough. I but it does happen quickly. It sort of happen. It can yeah. happen in a matter of mm. days or weeks. Anyway, listen. I don't. I'm not begrudging the fact that he asked for money. That's fine. I just felt a little bit annoyed because I thought he was an ordinary person. Right. And he came up to me and he said nice to me, "Go on." And he said to me, um, "Excuse me, mate. Have you got the time?" <laughs> and I said, uh, "Whatever. You know, ten past three. And he went, "Have you got any money?" And I knew that. I was annoyed, and and it annoyed me because I thought. <sighs> I should have known straight away. I mean, a homeless person, you know, I sensed it, sensed it straight away. Yeah. Excuse me if you've got the time. I wanted to say to him, where have you got to be? Well, yeah. What appointments have you got? Well, no, maybe he, d he goes to work, he starts begging at three o'clock. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, he asked all that day, he goes, what's the time? They go, quarter to four, or whatever. You know what I mean? Then he goes, oh, give us some money. It's three o'clock. Right. He, maybe he has the mornings off. It yeah. might have been his, it might have been his day off. He was doing half day or, you know, shift work. Yeah. He might, you know what I mean? You never know what shift they're on. But I just on. think when you see those people from shelter or from famine relief in the street, they've got to wear those kind of, those little things over their clothes that yeah. say where they're from. Or yeah. at least some kind of name tag. Yeah. So you know when you're stopped by them, you know what to expect. They've got a clipboard. I know. These homeless people who come out of there, they look like regular people. They come lurching out like zombies. You go, oh, you think that's that's, a, that's an attractive woman? She's just come over. Oh no, look, she's got a dog on a piece of string. I know, yeah. I just think they've got to come out with that's it. They just come stuff. out with it. Just be yeah. honest. Be you know, be proud. Those people with the things sometimes annoy me. Is where they stand right in the middle of the pavement. I have to zigzag. I have to mm. cross the road four times to get through them. Mm. It's like it's like playing Getaway yeah. on video, avoiding all these up and down Oxford Street. You yeah. have to really, and they, they come out, and um, worse than they recognise me. That's why I've got about eight standing orders now where I've been caught. But and I I'm leave the house and I'm, it's just like people are trying to take my money from me. <laughs> Between my house and the tube, there's just swarms of people trying to take my money from me. <laughs> at any cost. Carl's got his first little direct debit, haven't you? Five quid a week or something, quite a bit a month. Yeah, I've joined some, uh, something to help Africa out. Mm -hmm. Um, I quizzed her for a bit. I mean, she came over and she was saying- she, He was talking to her for about 40 minutes. Yeah. Just making yeah, well, sure yeah. your money was going right to the right place. Yeah, I was saying, you know, uh, why have I got to give you my bank details? This is the thing. And I was saying to her, I'm sure you'd make more money, right? If you just had a little thing that you put money in. I said, I, I want to help you out, right? But it's the fact I've got to give you bank details. And she's saying, no, this is the way we guarantee we make money. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can help places out because we could be out all day and we could only earn like 50p, whereas, yeah. you know, we know that it's worth us standing around. Yeah. So I was like, well, fair enough. So, so what's, what's my money gonna be doing then? And I think it's called, uh, uh, care, care of the world or something. Yeah. And she's saying we're giving them, uh, money to buy hammers, and we're not just gonna give them money to blow in and stuff. They've gotta, like, work and, and- They don't it. give them money! Well, whatever. What did you think <laughs> of these people just, like, uh, <laughs> and these these drought planes. Like it's a gift voucher for being you. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to buy a hammer. No, what, what, they, they go with the buckets and go, all right, and they throw it up and they go bundle. <laughs> yeah. She she was making out anyway, right? That she was nice enough. She was selling it to me. She said, you know, we give them the tools, and they feel good because they're building up their own place and everything. Mm. And uh, so fair enough, right? And now I've done that for two months. They've had a tenner off me already. <laughs> I'm checking it, making sure they're not ripping me off and that. Yeah. If I ever go to Africa and I need a hammer, <laughs> and there isn't one, yeah, I'll be livid. You'll be livid because <laughs> you know it is a lot of money. Sure, sure. Every, every month, fiver. Yeah, and you know you're talking about people hassling you and that in the street. I actually moved flat. The last flat I lived in, I moved from there because of the the hassle. That really? was yeah, it was a high street, and you couldn't like you were saying, you nip out for a loaf. And spend about forty quid, yeah. <laughs> just just on people saying, "Give us the money for this." Samaritans, <laughs> tramps, heart attacks, old yeah. people, or whatever. It's yeah. like, <sighs> yeah. so it ended up pushing me off that street. It was no, like, I, I can't handle this. It's, <laughs> get, it's getting crazy out there. They may as well have little stalls. Yeah. Hey, but listen, let's make the world a better place with a little bit of music. Oh, thanks. A bit of Bauhaus. Yeah. <laughs> Give generously, people. Come yeah. on.
Bauhaus's version of David Bowie's Ziggy Stardust on XFM 104.9. And Ricky Gervais would be Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, possibly for the last time. And as a special treat, <laughs> a return, sort of like a summer special, an end of term, well, a gift to the fans, Carl is bringing back Rockbusters. <sighs> no. Do you want to explain it? Uh, Rockbusters is basically blockbusters, completely ripped off, done with music, um, that may or may not be a cryptic clue, and may or m may not be the actual band name, and may or may not be the actual letters he said they were in the first place. Do you want to sort of describe one though in case someone's a new listener? And, like, well, oh, Exploding Pet was Atomic Kitten. Yeah. Okay. But so. basically, for those of you who are new to the show, this is the final show, uh, Carl reads out what he considers to be a cryptic clue. It's yeah. not a cryptic clue, it's just some words. Just a yeah. string of words. Yeah. And from that, you are supposed to deduct the name of an artist or a group or a band. Um, we've, we've had things like the Jamaican fella swinging a fish round. That was De Trout Spinners. De Trout Spinners. So that's the sort of, that's the level of intellect you are getting from Carl Pilkington. What was the just one? Just do the competition, what? I was thinking, you f was it that she, she fell down wet in Texas? Wet knee Houston. She fell down into a puddle in Texas. On, yeah. a, on a knee, wet knee Houston. Yeah, so you said it twice, it it's not cryptic, it's so not just right. do it. Come on. Right, so there's three of them and you email in your answers. We've got some good prizes today and that. Right. Well, um, let me tell you the prizes, let me tell you the prizes. They yeah. aren't bad. They're so bad. through it, because this, you know, yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah, the yeah, competition's yeah. bad enough, let alone just listening. What, what's They've he got? got three got? DVDs Brilliant. and six CDs. He's got the young ones and all that, lots of TV things. There's some great CDs, yeah, go on. Right, so the first one, uh, cryptic clue, um, this vegetable mm -hmm. started life down under, right? Mm. This vegetable started life down under, the initials K-O, right? K-O, this vegetable started life down under. Second one, um, the things that, uh, you normally find on the beach, right, have been found floating around the moon. Right? Yeah. That's, uh, I think it's T.S. Uh, <laughs> you think it's T.S.? Yeah. You set the questions, but you're not sure. Um, so, the things you normally find on the beach have been found floating around the moon, right? And the last one, uh, well, if you put that many in the post, I'm surprised I didn't receive one. <laughs> <laughs> right? He thinks they're great! Well, he thinks he's brilliant! Well, you know, if you put that many in the post, I'm surprised I didn't receive one. Is it locked in? He did all the... Mm, well, <laughs> yeah. The what? initials there, FC. 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 Mm. Right? So you email in the answers, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Win that hey, stuff. Hey, let's slam dunk in some sounds. Well, slam dunk some ads first. Okay. <laughs> That will be the next single from DMX. That's called Wear the Hood Out on XFM 104.9. It bloody better be. <laughs> I know you're a fan. <laughs> <laughs> you enjoyed it. You love a bit of hip hop, don't you? XFM 104.9. Yeah, keep it real. Hippie hop. <laughs> oh, it's so, really yeah. yeah, sweet man, sweet. Halfway it's that kind through. of stuff, it's that kind of uh, lingo and that kind of patois that they won't be hearing next week. No, I know. No, no. Off making some bling bling. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, that's the sort High of. Five, man. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. It's uh, weird, all that, uh, all that talk and that, isn't it? I don't know Brilliant. what that means, Excellent. What do you mean? No, just all that bling bling and all that, because I, I didn't understand it, right? So I did a bit of, uh, did a bit of research. Brilliant. That's what you should do if you don't understand something. Look yeah, it up. I mean, that's always what, scope that's what it out. I, I always do that. I yeah. always do that, though. You know I do that. No, I'm yeah. giving you props for even doing it, Yeah, so. massive respect. And big right. you up. Yeah, go on. But, um, it's all slang. Right? Oh, yeah. Is it really? Is it really? It's so not it's not in the- uh, really? That's odd. No, I don't remember it being in Romeo and Juliet, but then- so yeah. you didn't you didn't speak like that when you went to Oxbridge? What? Never mind. But no, I uh, did yeah. a bit of research into it, right? Go and on. Uh, one of the things that they use yeah. is uh, oh, I was out last night, did a one eight seven. Yeah, that's the uh, murder. Yeah, but why use slang, right? Because apparently one eight seven is police slang. Yeah. Well, if you well it's not a slang. It's a it's a code. Well, don't don't use what the police know you're talking about. Yeah, I don't think they do it with police around. Do they not? Probably not. Carry on then. Yeah. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah. <laughs> so, I always remember the uh, Cockney rhyming slang. Supposedly yeah. originated because, you know, East End villains or whatever would make up their own slang so that if they're overheard, 
yeah. in conversation, then they won't know what they're talking about. But just look, you know, just look it up in some kind of Cockney rhyming slang. Yeah, I like that idea of going, okay, where is he? Where's fingers? Wow, copper. I'm gonna tell you this. He's up the apples and pears. <laughs> exactly. Well, I know what that means. Well, leave, leave the- leave the- leave the house then. Yeah. If you don't know that he's hiding up the apples and pears, you might as well shoot <laughs> off. Exactly. Well, I can't possibly figure that out, so I'll just have to shoot off. Yeah, where was he last seen? He was last seen with his trouble and strife. I know what that means. Okay. Well, you might as well shoot off then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a perfect code. Of course, though, uh, talking about Shakespeare, Shakespeare invented 1200 words and slang gets in, so there are more and more words and slang soon becomes, you know, the norm. There's no- there's no not real words and real words, you know, do you know what I mean? They're- they're just as valid if they're common parlance, so they- they all become part of the- or they fade away and they're- they're not used because they're a fad. Yeah, like was up. Yeah. Uh, hmm. that- that- that's probably in the dictionary. That is- you that- so? yeah, or- or soon to be. I was reading, uh, was it a couple of years ago, um, uh, you're gonna like this not a lot. Right. Got into the- yeah, it's so a popular thing's got in there. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna like this, not a lot. Uh, Zig Zig R, I think, got in or something. Oh no, girl power got in. Right, girl yeah, power as a as a as a, fra a common phrase. Yeah, I like oh, sorry, oh, sorry, go on. Go on. Go on. No, no, no. You have to. You make. No, it's just it's just that with the slang thing. Did I tell you I was trying to read that that book about uh, the governor? Oh yes. And that that was full of that, and it had a page on the front that you had to keep going to when uh, you know what I mean. When when he used a bit of slang, you had to sort of go right. I don't know what he means. Glossary. Right. Just uh, knit back, have a look. I but thought you um, meant- when you said oh, there's a page at the front, I thought you meant the cover with his face on. I can't remember what I'm reading <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, there he is. Is this the book that you nearly finished reading but you realised all the pages were in the wrong order? Yeah. He- <laughs> <laughs> He bought a cheap book. Right, a seconds- a uh, second shot. Started reading it, loving it. Then he started reading about this bloke and he went from jail to school. And then he looked <laughs> at the page numbers and they were all out of order. <laughs> How annoying is that? <laughs> I mean, you never read books, do you? I <laughs> never, never read one, right? And Suzanne, it was a week and we were going to Hastings because you two had done me head in, yeah. right? She said, I'm gonna take you away so you relax and what have you. So, ended up not relaxing because it was like putting a jigsaw together. <laughs> yeah. I'd started reading it on the train, <laughs> thinking, loving this. It's a really interesting story about this fella who, you know, didn't have a great life as a kid, starts getting into a bit of crime, what have you. Turns out to be the governor. Mm. But it wasn't as easy as that because, like you say, it was <laughs> started off at school, then he was in prison. And he was like, Oh God, he started young. <laughs> and then, next thing, he's like married, and he's like, hang on, he's like twelve. And then he's, he's, <laughs> he's had a heart attack. <laughs> and then, like, but I just thought it was part of the thing because I read chapter one and then it did say chapter twelve, but I thought, right, it's like that sort of done in that stylish way that everyone's doing. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of a biography? Uh, Look at that, he went there. messing with the I medium. Was, I was born in the East End. Take one onion, <laughs> yeah. add some, uh, it, this is like- It's the idea that an East End villain's gonna write his autobiography, but think, yeah, I'm just gonna play with the form a bit. I'm gonna get quite postmodern with this. <laughs> no, but- you know He's know I mean? barely able to write, probably. Yeah, well, you, you could say that about him, Steve, I wouldn't. I think he's an educated man. Go on, next, Carl. But, uh, yeah, just because it was like two for a tenner, that shouldn't be like- Oh well, you you know you got a, you got a good offer. So no, that's rare. That, is, the, yeah. I'm sure the bloke selling it did not know that the pages were out of order. Let's face it, Carl, you read it and didn't realise. Yeah. So you can't I really love blame the fact him. You got almost half the <laughs> way through before you realised. Oh, no, no. Yeah. But anyway, you know. still that teacher and that's put you off books for life, hasn't it? Well, I don't I don't like getting into books now. I just read snippets of information. Play record. Play record. No, I'm just going to tell you about a bit of. Information that I was reading. Okay. Um, I can't. Well, we play. No, no, I've got time for a bit of drivel before we play next tune. Well, I'd rather hear a tune and come back for drivel because I think people are tuning in for drivel. So let's tease them. Okay. Let's have a record. Then some absolute shite from <laughs> Carl Pilkington. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Look forward to that. Long view, and further. I love that one on XFM one hundred four point nine. Richard Ray's Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. All right, Carl, what did you learn? Right, uh, like I say, I don't like reading books. There's too much to take words. in. It's too much words. I'm busy in that. Yeah. Um, I don't like reading books, actually, but yeah. go on. So, but I uh, have done. <laughs> so, go on. Right, so, I was looking in this magazine, right, and it was more about, do you know, I'm, I'm not that impressed with Einstein and Newton and that lot. No, why should you be? What have they ever done? Go on. No, but, you know, you know the fact. You see, the the Columbus thing. He's another one, isn't he? Who got a bit of praise for <laughs> finding America. Yeah. And it's like, it would. Someone else would have come across that at some point. Yeah. Right. 
<laughs> and yet, news this week, they've found two new types of frog, right? <laughs> no one's making a fuss. And look how small they are compared to what he bumped into. And that's what I'm saying. People make a big deal out of all these people who are finding stuff, right? Yeah. So, the next person- I, I, I mean, it's, uh, my head's buzzing, but I can't be bothered. I actually can't be bothered. Don't think this reaction's a good reaction. I don't know where to start with this drivel, but carry on. Right. So anyway, the next fella, who- The I'm next always... fella? I, I, see, I don't know, you talk in riddles. The next fella I'm gonna talk about, Go Einstein. On then. Yeah. Right, everyone raves about him all the time. Yeah. Right? So I'm trying to get into my head. Yeah. Like, why is- why is amazing and that. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, did a bit of reading up on him in this science magazine. Yeah. Right? Now, I read it, it's only, only, a, you know, I don't know, 200 words, whatever, trying to get across what he worked out. But I read it last night. Is it relativity like, you're talking about? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, to so say, yeah, like, I just made that word up. Yeah. It, it, you heard that's, it? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was his biggest yeah, Okay, so the 200 words, as far as you recall. So anyway, so I read it and I was like, I don't, I don't know what, what, what is going on about here, right? So <laughs> Suzanne was with me, I said, can you read this? She said, I'm watching Sex and the City. Yeah. Right? I said, right, but. Can you read it and explain to me what I don't understand here? She says, well, I'm, I don't understand it's great. it. Yeah. It's great. It's like she's thinking, I, d I haven't got kids. Yeah. And yet he still wants me to help with his homework and yeah. I'm watching telly. Yeah. I've been at work all so day. So she said, look, go in the bedroom and read it out loud to yourself. Maybe it make more sense if you read it out loud. <laughs> yeah. Right, so I said, right, I'll go and do that then. And it was good because it's cool in there anyway, right? So <laughs> I went in there. <laughs> so read it out, uh, twice. Went back and I said, I don't get it still. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, right, wait ten minutes, and I saw it out. So I was sat there looking at it, trying to work it out before she had to look at it. I was like, no, I forget this. Now, what he was saying is, yeah. if you send a man to the moon, yeah. right, Yeah. he was saying uh, to the fella in, in the rocket, yeah. it would seem like twenty years to him. Yeah, not the moon, but yeah. No, it was. That's what it said. It said the moon. Well, it wouldn't because it's only about. Uh, uh, no, but listen, listen. So it took twenty twenty years to the fella. Yet people who are on the Earth, it would seem like two thousand. Yeah, because because time is relative, not not. I don't. What What do you mean? Right. Well, the, well, listen, the fact is that it's, it's tending towards the speed of light where it really makes a difference. They've even done it with atomic, um, uh, clocks where they've, uh, sent one up, uh, even in Concord, and it's like point naught one of a second difference. What, what is the watch? Yes. Yeah, because, uh, uh, greater speeds. But why does speed affect how a watch works? Right, I don't well, think because, this is a conversation- because, look, speed- I, I, speed Sorry, see Scott, what I mean, just what I mean, Steve. Right. See what I've done. I don't think this is a conversation to be had on a Saturday afternoon on no, a radio show. but I'm just saying, though. It's not- it's not me, is it? It's- It is you. you. You went quiet, Steve. No, because- You're having problems I, Because there. I'm not gonna be able to explain it to you- I will explain it to you in a light, break. frothy way. It's- it's- it's speed equals- basically velocity equals distance over time, when velocity, uh, doesn't change, and nor does no, distance, it's... time has to. That's his theory. Mm. Yeah? We just got What's your point then, again? Carl? What's your I'm, point? I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, uh, because you don't understand you know it, it's, it's like, worthless. I was trying to explain to Newton uh, that basically formulated, the, you know, the, the laws of the universe, uh, the three laws of the universe. Uh, uh, even playing snooker, I'm trying to drop some in. I was going, well, equal and opposite reaction and all these sort of stuff, right? And, um, and he was going, what did he do apart from the apple on his head with the gravity? And I went, well, what do you mean? And he went, well, what, why was it a problem? If we had been floating mm -hmm. round, yeah. I'd have called him in. But since we're not, we don't need him. Yeah. That's what he said. Play a record. Yeah. You're a buffoon. So there's these two new kinds of frogs, you say. You're joking. What? A monkey had a hat? <laughs> the monkey had a voice as well. I believe in a thing called love by the darkness on XFM 104.9. Last show. Possibly the last ever show. It's up to the K Man. Little pilky, baldy pilky, little whingy Dimo Manco, as he's called his Latin name, Dimus Mancoid. All right, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're gonna miss this, aren't you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Good show, though. Enjoying the last show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's all right, and uh, you know, I hope it gets better because uh, Telegraph are listening today. The you? Telegraph, the paper. Yeah. Why? Do, what do you, are they? Why do you say that? 
just uh, Jenny, the PR woman, said to me yesterday. She said, uh, just you know, do some good topics and that, so you don't have to worry there. <laughs> <laughs> um, what you? What they phoned up to say? Uh, Hello, it's Telegraph here. We'll be listening tomorrow. I don't know. I don't know what they what they're doing. They're Are they doing a review of it or something? I don't know. Why would they do that? With, there's no reason to. I, I, I'm a bit. I, why didn't you mention this earlier? Well, 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 so the Telegraph have said, uh, we'll be li why would they call up to say we'll be listening? It's because a free said, country. Because they said they'll be listening, but also, can you make sure you record it? Because if we can't listen to it because of the pirate stations that are on at the weekend, because it affects our right. signal and stuff. Whoever's listening must listen and know there's a problem with pirates and they said, can you- Well, they're probably just doing a feature about radio shows or something then. They're gonna tear oh, us to well. shreds. They're gonna- they're, I yeah. mean, listen to- sorry, seriously, seriously, the drivel we've talked today. I mean, uh, what are they gonna make of it? That's, well, like, no, that's no, a broad I, sheet I, newspaper. I, I think I know what Monday's headline's gonna be. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna be like, you know, they're gonna forget about the power cuts. It's not gonna be about, you know, the inquiry or terrorism or anything. It's gonna be, no more to knob news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's gonna- oh. they're gonna love that. I mean, I- they? seriously, I- I have a little bit of self-respect. And if I'd known something quality- a quality newspaper was gonna be listening, I wouldn't have turned up today. Because I- <laughs> I mean, I'm an award winner, you know, and I'm a respected television writer. And I've, you know, won awards, sort of classy. Don't, don't worry though, and don't worry. And what have we talked about? Knobs, we've had the worst quiz on radio, mm, yeah. we've had you trying to explain mm. relativity, you didn't even understand what that word meant. You, I don't think you recognise the word. You read There's that article. Words, I don't you read that article four times, twice out loud. <laughs> why you could, where you could hear Sex in the City music, right? And yet you that I, I might, that word might have been a clamp instance. You hadn't heard it before, so I don't know. Do you look between the lines? Do you actually look at the words? No, there's too many words though. <laughs> <laughs> the Telegraph are gonna love that. Which way there's up loads you... of words. The Telegraph have got loads of words. I which... mean, there's cover with it, words. Which way up do you hold the magazine when you read it? <laughs> no, but there is too many words. I, I mean, mean yeah. pictures of people, are they upside down? There's, well, there's, there's, I mean, yeah. There's too many words. There is too many words in the world. Do you know what this one means, right? Go this on. is one I learned the other day. Uh, mm. I think it's, uh, anti -Dewean. No. What does that mean? Old. Sorry, how do you spell it? Don't know, <laughs> of course you don't. Anti Dewean. No, I've I've never heard of that word. It, it mean it means old. But the annoying thing is, it takes longer to say, um, and it's the fact that if you. But where do where do you where do you hear that word and in what context? And someone told me about it. I was talking to someone about long words and that because you mentioned something when we were out drinking, and I said to you, "Why did you say that then? What what word does that mean?" And then you had to explain it, and I said, well, you didn't have to say that, you could have just said blah blah. But can I say, Steve, I wasn't sort of trying to cut him out or being pretentious, it must have been just a normal word in my vocabulary that he didn't know. Wait a minute, what, vocabulary pretentious? I- like, <laughs> You lost me. <laughs> you lost, you lost, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell I you what- I love that you're scared by syllables. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just- I'll you know. tell you what, though, um, uh, I was gonna do a feature about this, it's funny you should say it, I was gonna do a feature, my next feature I'd written down is How Good the Telegraph Is, the newspaper. Yeah. It's bloody brilliant. I love it. Cos oh. it's informative, um, it's impartial, it does- this research good, I think it's a lovely layout, the, f the photography's brilliant. Oh. Um, I love- do you know what? I like the bloody font! I love, I love the bloody font! Oh, and do you mind something else? I mean, you what? say it's sort of, you know, I mean, if there's any bias at all, I mean, there isn't because it's apolitical, but I, mean, I bloody love the Tory party. I love- wow, well, and it's not- let's not go into great. it, but I mean, but I, I mean, love- I just like the I just like the journalism and the- the you way the size of the paper? Do, 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 I like the way they're fair. They'd never- they'd never like, you know, slag us off. No, no. But also, so, I think it's because they understand that, you know, we don't really care, and so we can't be really blamed for anything they hear on the radio. No. It's not really our fault. It and was sort of and, and anything we said that was like, you know, a bit nasty or stupid was- was probably sort of like some clever sort of ironic postmodern- so, Yeah. Satire. Player record. Yeah. Brilliant Telegraph. It's, it's, it's very fairly priced, don't you think? I think it's too cheap. <laughs> I know. The, uh, the cult there. She sells Sanctuary. Um, on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Now, if the Telegraph are um, listening, and they're, they're, you know, whoever it is, they're writing their article, and they're, they're coming up with sort of words like cheap, smutty, um, lowbrow, low mm -hmm. yeah. Le uh, in, in our defence, could I just say that we're pandering to our listenership? Yes. You know, I mean, th this, this station, 
draw. I mean, w without exception, the people who work here, the executives, the DJs, are alcoholics, mm -hmm. drug users, yep. sex offenders. Check the register. You know, They're and we're there. trying to fit in with that for two hours a week. So we really have to sort of really bring it down. Seriously dumbing down. Um, but if you want, we, we should do our- stuff. We Well, we do our normals, like we talk about usually. Tits. When we, well, no. yeah. Satire. Yeah. Satire is what you mean. Satire. Political satire. Social political. and political satire. Yeah. If you listen any other week, that's what you would have heard. Well, me and Steve are sort of like quite, you know, political animals and, and, uh, you know, oh, Proust. <laughs> oh. I love him. Oh, I wish he'd- I wish he'd resign as governor of, uh, yeah. France. Have you read Martin Amos's new novel? I love it. It's all- it's so- Brilliant. Lovely. Very long. Um, so, uh- Oh, politics though. I mean, what do you make of politics, Rick? Um, I- I'm sorry, I was just planning on going to the English National Opera tonight to yeah. see- To see, brilliant um, Tartuffe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, politics is brilliant. It's my yeah. favourite thing. Say I, something- I, say something political. satirical and comical about, say, John Prescott. Oh, he's got- <laughs> Stop eating pies, Prescott. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't like to be him about now. <laughs> so that's, that's the sort of stuff. What do you make of George W. Bush? He's a bit stupid, isn't he? Well, th that's the dangerous thing. He's the most powerful man in the world, and I just think I, I hope he's sort of he thinks about stuff he does first. <laughs> oh, please, please, please. So that's so that's sort of wise as well as, as well as comic. I thought of something about Bush as well. Go on. But it's it's about his name and a woman's fanny. Oh. So I was going to bring those two together. I think it's fine though. I don't think that can, I think that's still quite highbrow because you've incorporated Bush, uh, which mean, meaning the president that means fanny not, as well. <laughs> so I think we're pleasing both. <laughs> we got both camps. Um, <laughs> camp. That reminds me of something. I know. Yeah. So that's so if you're listening, Telegraph. Um, David Telegraph. That is brilliant. Sort of thing you're brilliant. Of, that's sort you're of thing brilliant. We're able to do. Too many words for Carl. But what about some adverts? I'd love to. Buy the Telegraph. Excellent. Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. Stop. On XFM one hundred four point nine. Well, if the Telegraph are listening, they'll be- they'll be loving the music. Oh, that's great music. They'll be loving knob news. Uh, coming up, Telegraph, just to keep listening because monkey news is coming up. Mm -hmm. And should we do the results of Rockbusters, the- the worst quiz- The on, best quiz, the best quiz. best quiz. Oh, was that? Yeah. On radio. Do that shortly, although, um, probably you're thinking, Rick, um, isn't it time that we do our usual roundup of what's been happening in the news? Yeah. Which we always do every week. Yeah. Uh, we always do something. We should- I mean, basically, if you're listening and you're a new listener, say you work at a newspaper, we always try to be informative, just try and put stuff out there that just educates people, informs people. What are you people. thinking? Well, I said monkey news is coming up, but what have yeah. you got? No, I was just looking on the net there and just found a couple of quite important news stories, probably worth mentioning. Um, policeman caught photographing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it makes me laugh. It's just the phrasing, I suppose. It's, it's a headline. Policeman caught photographing up woman's skirt. <laughs> now um, he wasn't up there taking a picture <laughs> of Big Ben. No. He wasn't going, can I just sit up here? I'm just gonna take a picture of that, <laughs> that seagull over there. No. He was facing the camera up a woman's skirt. <laughs> he was indeed. Right. Uh, a policeman in Japan is facing disciplinary measures after he was caught photographing up a woman's skirt <laughs> with a hidden camera while on duty. Uh, the 42-year-old sergeant, who's not been named, used a digital camera to secretly snap the shots when the woman was reporting a stolen bicycle. So he was actually- He was actually doing his proper job. He'd obviously thought to himself, I'll bring him a digital camera today, on the off chance a beautiful woman comes in to report a crime or robbery, I'll have it ready, I'll have it positioned, you know, yeah. in such a way. But this is interesting, this is how he got caught, okay? The woman became suspicious after she saw a flash go off. Brilliant. <laughs> I mean, this Not a secret at all. <laughs> Sorry, did I just see your shoe? Your shoe just seemed to just spring into life. There was light. There was light. Yeah, I think I've had some. I, someone set fire to some magnesium that was <laughs> no, on the no, end of it. No, it no, won't no, happen only, again. But it's only you and I in here, and your shoe was just yeah. suddenly lit. Why are you standing like that? Why is your shoe just sort of like between my feet? There's no reason. There's no, no reason. Just, stand. just do, where? What did the bike look like? Flash. <laughs> so, <laughs> are you taking pictures of my family? No, 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 no. And no, I'm not. And you should be wearing knickers anyway. Well, do you know that? What? How did you know on that? How did I know what? The, I'm not wearing any. I didn't know you. I don't know what you've got up there. Well, I don't know what it looks like, and I never. There's no way I could. <laughs> of course, that, that would be. It would be the roughly that conversation in Japanese. I know. Yeah. Do yeah. You know, um, you just mentioned that about sort of no knickers and that. <laughs> it's sure. going to be your auntie Nora. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. It's just you know, like the the last flat that I lived in, I always had a good view across the road, and I could see. Uh, he was the hairy, hairy. There was the hairy Chinese. Well, not hairy Chinese kid. He was just a Chinese kid, actually. Yeah, yeah. Running because that's rare, isn't it? Hairy Chinese kids, very yeah. rare, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. There's only one official sighting, isn't <laughs> there? <laughs> in one of those uh, shit little magazines that you buy. Uh, yeah, he was running around in his underpants. Did you? Me. Sorry, you just swore ironically. I mean, I imagine if there's any newspapers listening, you did that 
because he's sort of jokey and yeah, yeah, yeah go yeah, on. Yeah. That's not swear. And there was the old woman who didn't move. She was just sat there reading the book all who the time. Who we think possibly died, and no well, one came round yeah, for I weeks. Yeah, been. but and now I've moved right, mm. and it was quiet for a bit. I always look at what view I'm getting. Sure. Right, uh, looks across and it was just sort of empty, sort of flats ready for people to move in and yeah. that. Right. Anyway, people are in there now. <laughs> right, um, and they've put all the furniture in, but yeah. I haven't put any curtains up. Oh. So anyway, I'm I'm sort of washing up, just having a having a look out the window. Yeah. Right. Uh girl sort of uh wandering about with no knickers on. Right? With no knickers on. You mean no naked? knickers. Well she had a bra on. Right, but, okay. But uh She was no probably looking for a knicker. So I thought, oh And I don't know how long I was looking. No. <laughs> right. But anyway, she looks across. Oh god. I think she spotted me. Yeah. I think, oh God. I felt really bad. Yeah. I said to Suzanne- Sorry, is this some sort of Peeping Tom confession while the Telegraph are listening? <laughs> I have no idea. Well, it's, it's not- that's the thing though. Peepington. I, if- if I was peeping, she was peeping as well, cos she was looking over. Works both ways, doesn't it? Yeah, but- but yeah, yeah, all she could see of you was your bald head. Yeah. No, no, but And your hands moving as you were washing up. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> and some white looking substance <laughs> roughly up. A stubborn stain on this yeah. glass. Yeah. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine if she looked across. I'm assuming this sink is lower but, than the window. But but did, didn't she just like just cover up or something? Or she looked back and go, "Oh, you're looking at you're looking at Vanny." Well, <laughs> the thing I did. What I thought, oh, just sort of dropped me boxer shorts. Because what? Thought, well, Suzanne said, "What are you doing? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, just 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 so they can see me cheeks of me. What are you ass. talking about? No, they because I thought. If she thinks I am ro walking about in the nude as well, then we've both got something out of it. Carl, this sounds like this sounds like a bad excuse in court. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know. This is or the plot of a film on Channel Four. I mean, this this is like the doctor who got done right for exposing himself to a patient and set and brought and then then painted that little thing. Um, that you look down their throat, pink. Yeah. And going and going, this is what they saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, uh, so sorry, you immediately, so you were looking at a woman dancing around naked, right? So well, the, the only thing you could do was immediately uh, drop your boxer shorts. So she looked across, saw you fully clothed, saw you took your no, boxer shorts. No, she wouldn't have done because it's sort of just the top half and the sink's at a side angle, so I was sort of looking out. So this she is wouldn't genius. Have shown, so she wouldn't have seen your trousers then anyway? No, she did. I, I moved in front of the window. So more. you then <laughs> made them. <laughs> <laughs> you actually climbed in front of the window. Oh, this is amazing! So you climbed in front ah! of the window ah! to show oh, off not, your, your, it wasn't your naked lower half. Su Suzanne said, what are you doing? And I, I said, bet she did! <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? So I, I sent you in here to clean up. What are you up? doing? I'm just, I'm just taking my trousers down, standing by the window. <laughs> Why? Because there's a naked woman across the road. What do you think I'm doing, Suzanne? <laughs> I'm exposing <laughs> myself while looking at some free <laughs> funny! Leave it, leave it, leave it. What's up with you? Susan! Leave it then, leave it. Christ! Are we, are we doing Rockbusters or what? Yeah! Oh, she sent you in there to read up on Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> and she <laughs> that. Ah! Oh, brilliant! Anyway, oh, oh, wait a minute, can I just get <laughs> a final question? What did the woman yeah. across the way, what yeah. happened? What, what was her reaction? I didn't look again, I just thought oh. you've, you've seen a bit of action as well. We're both happy. Let's, let's leave it. Brilliant. So, so were you waddling around like a penguin with your trousers around your ankle? Yeah. I just was walking about and Suzanne said, what are you doing? I said, I'll explain to you in a bit, but don't look out the window <laughs> because then it's Excellent. obvious. Then, yeah. her, then he sees that she calls her husband to look at Carl walking around naked and he goes, Oh, she's got a- Quick, Suzanne, get him out! <laughs> yeah. There's only one with England. Get some more friends! <laughs> They've gone one more! Anyway. Brilliant. <laughs> right, right, play a record, so come back to Rockbusters. And monkey news, we haven't got enough time, do Rockbusters- Oh, God almighty! Hanging round of Transformer, a little bit of Lou Reed. Nearly finished, nearly finished. Twelve minutes until we are no more. Don't Gervais. forget Monkey News still to come. Well, yeah, don't forget that. Monkey News still to come, but now the answers to <sighs> Rockbusters. Rock right, do the clues. Alright, the uh, first clue was uh, this vegetable started its life down under. Uh, the initials were KO. That was Collie Osborne. Alright. Holly Osborne. <laughs> the second one. No, no, no. D what, what are we letting that go? Yep, we haven't got time, Rick. Well, it's just, it's, it's, it's just not the word. We haven't got time, Rick. Also, cauliflowers so don't start there. Uh, don't start uh, down under. They're 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 on top. It's not like carrots. No, or... down under is in Osborne. Osborne, it was born, born in Osborne. Osborne. Right. Right. Collie. 
I thought you meant start a Co her name's not so, Collie! Right, the second one was, uh, the things that you normally find on the beach, right? They, they've been found floating around the moon. That's the space shells, right? Specials. <laughs> tweak it a bit. This shells. is rubbish. I mean, I, I, I tell you, no, this isn't even funny, though. Special. I mean, they're no good at all. Cryptic. It's not cryptic, it's wrong. Cryptic. It's not cryptic. cryptic. The last one was, uh, well, if, uh, if you put that many in the post, I'm surprised I didn't receive one. Go on. That's FC, 50 cent. Right? What? 50 cent. It was 50 cent. I didn't receive any, so. So he's- <laughs> <laughs> Collie Osborne. Collie. Her oh. name's not Collie. Her name is not Collie. Doesn't matter. Well, one- well It doesn't matter! Well done to Gina Ferry, who has emailed in. She's got all those answers right. Yeah, just, and, uh, just emailing your address and that. Mm. Yeah, email that. You're in, such Gina. an idiot, Carl. As are you, Gina. Right. <laughs> Loosen your hold by South. That's great. On XFM 104.9. Well, that's nearly it. Rick, can I just say thanks to everyone who's emailed in over the weeks and months we've been on because uh, obviously we're too lazy to even send them a response or a reply. Um, but we do appreciate We do appreciate it. Yeah, same with the, all the letters and stuff that we, you know, we can't. Yeah, people send stuff in all the time and they say they like the show or they don't or they contribute little ideas and stuff and we do read them and we do appreciate it. It's just that we, uh, when you've got someone like Carl Pilkington in the studio, you just need to pick his brain constantly and you've got re no real time for admin. But, uh, thank you for sending in all the nice, uh, letters and responses and stuff. Well, finally, um, we should let people know that next week, for the, uh, foreseeable future, uh, it's Adam and Joe. Brilliant. Oh, brilliant. And they're standing in for us this time next week. Well, you say standing in, but possibly replacing full time unless Carl Pilkington decides to change his mind and come back. What do you think, Carl? Uh, you enjoyed today's show, I know. Yeah, it's been all right. Yeah, you any t attempted to come back when we uh, when we finally mm. return? Maybe a little rest to make you sort of like forget how annoying I am. Cause no, that, because that that, that just... is my secret weapon. Sometimes you know, because it's the thing that you can um, you can f uh, uh, fleece a sheep as many times as you want, but you can only skin it once. Sure. So what I do. It's sort of like, I, I feel sure I never actually l l completely lose a friend. I tease them and talk to them to the point where they're gonna leave me, and I go, oh, anyway, how are you doing? I go, um, I sort of confuse them. Yeah. And that's what I've done with you today. And I think, over the next couple of months, where I'm sort of nicer on the phone, I'm not squeezing your head, you'll go, he's all right, Rick, what yeah. the, and then and I'll then, then then get then you I back in it. it and, and then, then I'll, I'll right, absolutely exactly rip you to pieces again. I'll be doing with. Oh. So, but hopefully, and also, um, unlike a lot of my friends who are clever, um, I don't have to worry about you because you will forget. You'll yeah. I mean, because you've got such a, you've got a tiny little intellect. And <laughs> exactly. Do you know what I mean? You'll forget Steve? this conversation even took place. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's what everyone's been waiting for. for it's what Carl time. exists for for the last time. It's the, it's monkey news. Play so, the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news. Right, you f are you, uh, familiar with Undreth Monkey? Keep the talking. Undreth Monkey? Undreth. Oh, yeah, like as in like, one more than ninety-nine. Hundredth. Yeah. The one hundredth monkey. Yeah, are you, are you familiar with that? No. No. Oh. Uh. Anyway, thanks, that was well, my we'll, news. We'll, we'll uh, that, next then. week, Adam and Jet. What do you mean you're gonna leave that? Well, I thought it was a popular phrase or something. <laughs> what, hundredth monkey? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean a popular phrase? What, what, why? What? Cause you're gonna do songs and phrases with it next week. We've said it once before, hundredth monkey. <laughs> no, it's just, uh, it says the expression hundredth monkey. Well, and do it, it anyway, it what's the from? story? Well, it's from the 1950s, right? Mm. And the way that they got it because, um, <sighs> they were following some monkeys about, right? And they started- <laughs> Who was? Who was- Who was? was? Journalists. Oh yeah, why? Oh yeah. <laughs> Just to see what- what they're up to. Right? Okay, <laughs> so they're following some monkeys around, yeah. <laughs> what was it? What, a documentary? Anyway, one of them- Come on! Come on! One of them washed some potatoes. <laughs> right, okay. Right, let's leave that, right? Let's leave- Wait, let's wait, leave wait, 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 come on! A monkey what? washing potatoes? Can we leave that one? No, no! We're not, it's you gotta do it now! <laughs> they're- they're following a- what is it? Like, like, sort of like a family? A is it a family of monkeys uh, or it was, a... it was just one chimp and it was washing a potato and he thought, that's a bit odd. Right? Yeah. And oh, yeah. It, it turns out that, that- that ended up teaching another monkey yeah. how to wash a potato. No, they do it- they do- they go down and wash them in the sea. Cause they like- they like the taste of salt. And the it's, weird it's, thing it's, is though, they when, pass it got, on, when it on. got to the hundredth monkey, right, even though it hadn't been taught how to wash a potato, yeah. it automatically knew. It knew what to do. What do you mean? What, what do you mean? It- it was in them. 
it was in them that, that they knew that when they get a potato they had to wash it. That isn't the monkey news, I'm just- I'm just saying that's where the expression comes from, but you don't even murder that, so. Well, there's a couple of things there that it could be a, a, another upshot and, you know, an instinct is- is part of your genetics and anything else. Washing a potato. But- but you can't pass on acquired characteristics, so that's nonsense. If you mean that, uh, someone was taught they had a child and it knew it. There's no- there's no chemical oh, memory right. as such in- So that, that wasn't even monkey news. No, the- the monkey news, you know, we've- we've covered a lot of stuff. There was sad- <laughs> there was sad- sad stuff, weren't they? Yeah. Uh, there's some funny stuff in there, you know. Yeah, yeah, Um. Do like monkey news! Playing robbers and that. Um, football team. A monkey football team? Yeah, in, mm -hmm. uh, Costa Rica. Oh, yeah. Uh, got all the, uh, got all the team members here, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> all the different things. Um, little goalkeeper. Apparently he's on transfers from some other club. But the bit that got me attention is, apparently he's a holder of PhD of physics. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to have a look at that? Oh, the goalkeeper? Yeah, just the goalkeeper. The, the others haven't done that much. <laughs> the others haven't done that much? <laughs> well, I believe that he's got better exam results than you, Carl, but I don't believe he's got a PhD in physics. Good Obviously- guy. Do you know what the name of the team is? Coconut. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh! So if the Telegraph are listening, that is the sort of quality entertainment you get. Well, you don't let's, anymore. Let's just put a song on then. Yeah, that's the end. What, Goodbye, what, everybody. What, what have a, leave? have yeah. a lovely summer. Yeah, have the a rest great of time. it. And, uh, we might see you in October. We might not. It's up to Carl Pilkington. Chances are slim. So call 0207 766 6000. Ask for Carl Pilkington. Or email him. What's this? Or, this is uh, Tim Buckley to end with. I think you'll enjoy this. It's called Once I Rose. Andrew Phillips. Call Andrew Phillips. See ya.